And you're very welcome to the last sideline view of the current series. But if you're a GA junkie, don't worry, there will be lots more GA at the same time next Friday with live coverage of the Airstale ISL All-Star Awards from the Burlington Hotel. That night, of course, one of the highlights of the GAA year, and the awards pretty well reflect the season. Tonight, our experts will try to second-guess next week's All-Star selection by choosing the sideline view teams of the year in football and hurling. Now, with us to reflect on who our experts chose are Tomás Mulcahy and Eugene McGee. Now, the criteria for selection was the exact same as the All-Star, so it is possible that a player can be accommodated out of position. Later, we'll tell you who made our hurling team, but we start tonight the sideline view football team for 1998, as chosen, not by me, I stress, but by Trevor Giles, Peter Canavan, Pat Fallon, Eugene McGee and Martin Brehany. In goal is Martin McNamara of Galway, who won two All-Ireland medals this year with club and county. Pat Fallon. I chose Martin McNamara because I think without a doubt he's been one of the main reasons why Galway had success this year. In every game, from the first game against us, right through to the final against Kildare, Martin McNamara made fantastic saves in every game that kept him in the game at vital stages. At right corner back, one of the great finds of the year, Brian Lacey of Kildare. Here's Martin Brehany. Brian Lacey started the season as something of an unknown inter at the highest level, but ended as the best cornerback in the country. Now, among the people he kept quiet this year were Jason Sherlock, uh, Tommy Dowd and Miles Fitzgerald, three of the best corner forwards in the country. He walked away at the end of all of those games, having beaten them all, I suppose, and uh, that's a great achievement. And uh, that makes him the best number two, I suppose. Speed and anticipation, his strong points, and nobody can argue with the fine lacing. At fullback, it's Sean Martin Lockhart of Derry. Peter Canavan knows him well. Sean really made us President felt on the Derry team this year. Very steady. Lost the championship, and his biggest task would have been marking Tony Boyle in the Ulster final, uh, which he did with great authority, and really took Boyle out of the game. At left corner back, Tomás Mannion of Galway, who's come up through the ranks from minor level. Trevor Giles. Tomás Mannion um, made the switch from left half back to left corner back, which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, really tied up Joe Brawley in the All Ireland semi final. Had a great All Ireland versus Mark Lynch and would be deserving of a place at left corner back on the All Star team. On to the half back line now, and Seamus Moynihan of Kerry was an almost automatic selection at right half back. An inspirational figure, both as a defender, vigilant at every turn. He also made some dashing runs into the forward line, and everything about him was class uh, going forward, defending, and his general all round play. No mistake from Seamus Moynihan, a fantastic wing back. At centre back, it's Glenn Ryan of Kildare, also an all star last year. Here's Peter Canavan. Glenn Ryan would be your ideal centre half back. He's very strong in the air, great passer of the ball, uh, never would give a ball away, and he just loved to attack. And I don't know where Kildare would be if they didn't have Glenn Ryan. Completing the half back line, Sean O'Dupware of Galway. A solid defender and very good going forward. Meanwhile, it's Galway that's going into the attack. Sean O'Dupware taking off Seamus Quinn. And what Seamus Quinn can do a moment ago, Sean O'Dupware can do now. At midfield, Sean O'Donnell of Galway, tower of strength as he proved in their campaign this year, and he is partnered at midfield by fellow Galway man Kevin Walsh. This is the opinion of Pat Fallon. They both complemented each other very, very well. Sean was a fantastic asset and kicked some fantastic points during the year. Again, they were inspiring scores. They also put in an awful lot of, of work together. Uh, Sean, I think, is the best fielder of the two of them and probably is the most mobile of the two of them as well. A lot of pressure was on Kevin from the very start because they reckoned that he was the one that would carry midfield. Um, I especially like the way he used his, his uh, distribution of the ball, was fantastic. I just think that overall his contribution was immense. On to the half forward line and Michael Donnellan of Galway. No surprise really, an outstanding year for him. Michael Donnellan again, terrific footballer. Players calling for it. Ja Fallon wants it, gives a return once more to Michael Donnellan, holding up the point of the attack against Anthony Rainbow. The angle tight, the kick good, and it sails over the bar. That's a second point for Michael Donnellan. On to centre forward, and it's Galway man number seven, Ja Fallon, who had an outstanding year. Peter's view. It's hard to believe that he was nearly lost to another code at the start of the year, but. Uh, First class act, very stylish. Everything he does, he does it with a bit of class. 
And again, the fact that Ja got his act together in the second half of the all Iron Fine really uh, made the difference for Galway in the end. Completing the half-forward line, Dermot Early of Kildare, definitely his father's son. Here's Trevor Giles. This is Dermot's first year to make the actual Kildare team. Um, very fine athlete, very tall player. Gave a man of the match performance against Meath in the Leinster final and also against Kerry in the all Ireland semi-final. And is going to be a great player in the future. In the full forward line, Vinnie Claffey is league champions, Offaly's representative. Here's Pat Fallon. Vinnie Claffey has been around for quite a while now. Um, last year I thought he was very lucky not to get an All-Star. This year he was one of the main reasons why Offaly had uh, the success in the league and went on to win the league final. And I think um, out of all the players that, have, that, I, that um, I've played against in the last couple of years, I think Vinnie deserved an All-Star. At full forward, it's Porrick Joyce of Galway, a consistent scorer throughout the year. That's a great ball. Donnellan inside Joyce. Joyce here's a chance. Galway showing the score here and they do. Paul and Joyce with a goal after just four minutes of the second half. And completing the full forward line from one of the so-called weaker counties, it's Declan Brown of Tip, an outstanding year. He created a record this year by being the top scorer, the first Tipperary man to top the top scorer in the championship, scoring 2.29 in four games. Now, that's an average of 8.75 points per game. That's the best since Matt Connor in 1980. He scored 11 points per game. A man with a fantastic future, and nobody can argue with Declan uh, Brown's choice. So there you have it, our expert selection, eight from Galway selected. Surprisingly, only three Kildare men make it, and one each from Offaly, Derry, Kerry and Tipperary. Yeah, and just to let you know, the automatic selections were Martin McNamara in goal for Galway, Brian Lacey also got five votes out of five, as did Glenn Ryan, Sean O'Dupuere, Michael Donlan and Charlotte Fallon. Well, Eugene, plenty of talk. players beaten uh, on a casting vote, uh, Finbar Cullen of Offaly and Darren Fay in defence and John McDermott in midfield. So uh, your own reflections on that team? Well it's not exactly the team I picked, it's close enough I think 11 or 12 but uh, it's difficult to argue against any of the people that are on as always. You know the argument at all stars is uh, why didn't such a person get one? It's never really uh, that fellow doesn't deserve it yeah. and uh, that would largely apply here. I, I personally doubt if this 15 will be matched by the 15 we'll hear next Friday. But uh, I Wait, think who, who will be in it next Friday? Well, I can't see the two Galway midfielders being selected uh, anyway for a variety of reasons. I, I just think there'll be somebody else, and I personally think that Willie McCreary would probably be the one there because he was the. Uh, I know he's a horsey man, but he he was the he did uh, a horse of a, of a year for Kildare when they were in trouble. He was the strong man there all the time when things were going badly, as well as when they were going well. Yeah, there were also, I have to say, in in our own votes, our own players voted. Niall Buckley featured as well as the John McDermott. Yes, the Niall Buckley and of course Dermot Early rescued Kildare at midfield as well. So, but at least Dermot Early is on. Uh, I, I, I'm a bit surprised that Dermot Early got on because of his youth. I mean that shouldn't be against him, but I I taught myself that uh, possibly. Um, you made a change. You, in your, if, if I say, Declan, you had Declan Brown at wing forward. I, I thought it, uh, Declan Brown. Yes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad that Declan Brown got on for a variety of reasons, but mainly because uh, it does show that the All Stars is not the exclusive domain of the top county. It almost is, but not quite. That a Tipperary footballer would get on would be great, and I, I hope, and a lot of people would hope that he actually does get an All Star next yeah. week. Now we had a few automatic choices. They were probably no great debate. The one that I was pleased with was Martin McNamara in goals solely because, apart from being a nice bloke and having had a good year, last year when Galway were beaten in Chewham, he got an awful time from the crowd. That's right, yes, because he misplaced some, kick some deliveries yeah. and so on. And this year, the, his great strength this year was his, his kick, well, it's kickouts. He was able to find his two midfielders with kickouts in an uncanny manner, which is a, a rare enough thing in goalkeepers. Even the best goalkeepers are not usually that good on the kickouts. And nowadays, most team managers are going for goalkeepers with kickouts first. It's going to save a shot after that as a bonus. Right, Vinnie Claffey of Offaly is in this team. Well, I suppose Offaly won the National League, and I suppose the, the perennial argument against the All Stars system is that uh, even though there are hundreds of games played in the National League, it hardly ever features in the All Stars. At least uh, Vinnie Claffey would be, he would be awarded a worthy recipient, and I suppose Offaly won the first National League, and they certainly would deserve at least one player anyway. Is it a weakness in the system that the team that wins the All Ireland gets seven or eight All Stars and the losers get two or three? 
I think it is, even though the, the team who wins that Ireland do deserve a big share. But, uh, you know, it's difficult to see how this can be uh, changed unless uh, three or four people were to be appointed in January each year and their exclusive task is to go around the country and watch the games and have some kind of a point system uh, where, you know, I'm sure a lot of good players... For instance, it's amazing to see the decline in Mayo this year. They have nobody at all, and you know all the good players they had the two previous years, and th those players haven't become bad overnight, but they just didn't get the exposure. All right, well, time now to see who was chosen as our overall individual footballer of the year. Here's Michael Lester. Steeped in football tradition, Michael Donlan is the third generation of the family to win an All-Ireland medal. A young and gifted footballer, the championship definitely proved a baptism of fire. As Galway conquered all in Connacht, he proved what a talented and versatile player he was, with many crucial scores, including the winning goal against Roscommon. A graduate of that famous football nursery, St. Jarlitz in Chum, the 21-year-old was in his first senior final. It proved victorious, with Donlan's performance outstanding. Constantly a threat to the Kildare defence, he scored two magnificent points and earned the Man of the Match award. He capped off an incredible year when he was selected for the Irish Test Series, and again, he was amongst the stars. Michael Donlan is a wonderful footballer who has the potential to be one of Galway's greatest servants. Excellent year for Michael. Um, started off with a very good Sigerson Cup campaign at Tralee RTC, followed up with a provincial under-21 medal with Galway, and then went on to give um, man of the match performances in the All-Ireland semi-final versus Derry and in the All-Ireland final versus Kildare. His main strengths would be his work rate, his ball-carrying ability, his speed, um, well able to score points, help out in defence. Um, fantastic year for him and he really kept Galway in the All-Ireland final when they were struggling in the first half and he would deserve my Player of the Year award for this year. Right, it was always on the cards Michael would emerge as a special player. I was reading in Highball magazine last week that as a youngster Michael once scored 33 points in a match but it remains to be seen, will he get the Footballer of the Year award next Friday? Well, now we switch our attention to hurling, and what a dramatic year we had. Many names to the fore, and quite a lot of juggling to be done, I'd imagine. Our selectors here were James e. O'Connor of Clare, Pat Rabbit of Galway, Martin Story of Wexford, Peter Finnerty, and Tomás Mulcahy. And this is what they came up with. Starting in goal, our experts have gone for Stephen Byrne of Offaly, his first year in Championship hurling. It was great. Here's Joe Rabbit. He was brilliant in the semi final against Clare, the two games against Clare. And, um, the final, he, he was good as well. He blocked some vital balls at vital times, you know, that just kept awfully in the game. Um, he, for me, would be number one goalie. At right corner back, a young man steeped in hurling tradition, Simon Whelan. Pete Finnerty. I picked Simon Whelan because in 1998 it was a magnificent year for Simon. In the All-Ireland final, I think he caught the in his place in the Offaly team for quite some time because he had magnificent display at cornerback. I think he's very worthy of an All-Star for 1998. Waterford's outstanding year is recognised with Sean Cullinan getting the vote from our experts. Good ball to top of the right and Eugene O'Neill out from full forward. Good turn here by uh, O'Neill. But oh, beautifully robbed there. Great hurling by the fullback Sean Cullinan. And the passage man was magnificent there. At left corner back, a defender of the forwards hate being marked by Martin Hanamy. Martin's story tells us why. He's the most consistent cornerback in the country over the last we say 11, 12 years, and I mean, he's never spectacular. He's not one of these men that get a ball, come out 60 yards and score a pint or something. He's really, really effective, and I mean, that's what makes him so good. Our experts have also made room to accommodate Willie O'Connor of Kilkenny at right half-back. Martin's story again. Willie O'Connor from Kilkenny, I suppose, has been the most tenacious little cornerback for his size. I mean, he's not a big man, and I mean, for his size, the amount of work and the amount of ball he gets is unbelievable. Uh, he never gets a ball and just drives it 70 or 80 yards down the field. He always trying to pick one of his colleagues out with it, you know, so I mean, to me, he's, be, he's a great cornerback. At centre half-back, Shawnee McMahon of Clare, another dominant year for him. His teammate, James O'Connor. Shawnee had a superb year. Um, I think, like, in the, in the five or six matches that we played this year, he was probably a contender, if not man the match in most of them. And um, he's a superb player, and, and definitely, I think, almost not a many choice. Our fourth selection from Offaly is Kevin Martin at left half back. Joe Rabbit. Played very well all year for them. Um, a great defender. You know, all you have to do is, is mark him and you would not know how, you know. He, he's a brilliant defender. You know. he's a very, I suppose, underrated player. And, you know, I, I rate him very highly. At 
Midfield, from Waterford, Tony Brown. Virtually an automatic selection. Pete Finnerty. Tony Brown was one of the players that rejuvenated Watford Hurling. He had so many men of the matches dis displays this year that it's very difficult to remember them all. In the All-Ireland quarter-final, he gave a display that will be remembered in Crowe Park for quite some time to come. He was probably unfortunate not to get uh, Bayer of the Year, but he was up there with the rest of the men. He had a magnificent year. No great surprise either in our second selection at midfield, Oli Baker of Clare, perhaps their outstanding player this year. Lynch still taking it forward, been given an advantage. Back towards Oli Baker. Looking for Clare's first score, a good point by Oli Baker. On to right half forward, another player from Clare and St Joseph's Dora Bearfield, their third player, Jamesy. Jamesy O'Connor is one of these hurlers that will always be in line for an all-star. But you don't get all-stars unless you deserve them. I think his first game in the championship this year against Cork, where he scored a point on the left-hand side and a point on the right-hand side, was a magnificent display of his ability to score from both sides. Jamesy is a great hurler, and again, he deserves an all-star. At centre-half forward, one of the strong men of the Offaly attack, it's Michael Dignan. Michael Dignan coming out here. That switch worked well. Dignan tearing through the heart of the Kilkenny defence on his left-hand side, and he puts it over the bar. The arms in triumph. Surely now it's Offaly. Left-half forward, he might be a veteran, but he had a brilliant year, Joe Dooley. Joe Dooley is really an automatic selection after the, the year he had. Um, I suppose what I remember him for is the, is the five points he scored against us in the, um, in the fatal third game. Um, I mean, to score five points from play in a, in a really tight, close game like that was a, a phenomenal contribution. And, um, you know, I think, I think Joe played a massive role um, in all the other games after we played this year. At right corner forward, our second selection from Kilkenny is Charlie Carter. First of all, his ability to poach around the square and score goals. Secondly, his ability to stop the back from clearing the ball. And those two qualities any player makes him very, very good to any side. But his game in the Leinster final, when nobody seemed to be playing well, Charlie took the game by the scruff of the neck. I think Charlie is one of these players that will be there for quite some time for King Kenny. I think he deserves his all-star as well. At full forward, he played most of his hurling in defence, but he's chosen at full forward, Brian Whelan of Offaly. John Troy, nicely on towards John Ryan. Nicely in here towards Eredy, the man who got the goal earlier on. Coming forward again, missing it this time, and it's a goal! Brian Whelan has done it! And finally, yes, the league winners Cork are represented on our team by Joe Dean. As forwards go, I suppose Joe Dean from Cork has to deserve an all-star in his performance in 1998. I mean, he was the, probably the main reason that Cork won the National League title. His scoring record has been unbelievable. He's always seemed able to make space for himself and get the ball between the posts. And he's still under 21, like, so I mean, I think he's a great future in the game. So there you have it. Seven from Champions Offaly, three players from Clare, two from Waterford, only two from the All-Ireland finalist Kilkenny, and one from League Champions Cork. Well, Tomás Mulcahy, Eugene said the sideline view team will differ a bit from the All-Star team in football. Will it differ in hurling as well, do you think? I, I would think so, Des. I think that there'll be a few changes to that. Um, if you were to look down to the team, I think centre field, it's, it's certainly rubber stamped. I mean, I think everybody around the country would see Tony Brown and Ali Berger as automatic. Yeah. Um, Shawnee McMahon automatic? Shawnee McMahon automatic as centre back as well, I think. Um, the backs themselves are very, very difficult to pick because I think we had outstanding performances all year from different teams in the back division. Um, up front in the forward division, you, you, you had differences of opinion as well, you know, and um, I just think the selection of Brian Whelan in here, uh, uh, our nomination of Brian Whelan in the forward division to me is, is, is a bit of a joke, I must say, you know. Which he is also for the All-Stars. Yes. And he's, been, he's in, been the writer's player of the year at full forward. I mean, no one's doubting his ability as a player. I'm amazed. I think it's an insult to other full forwards. Yes, I, 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 I'm amazed myself as well because, I mean, he, it's, it looks like that he's an automatic choice for full forward at this stage and it's probably going to deprive some other forward of a position in the forward division and uh, somebody who probably had a very good campaign during 1998. I mean, that's no, no disrespect to Brian Wheel. I mean, everybody knows he's an outstanding player and his best performances this year were at half-back position, where, where I would feel that he, he was already there from that position. Now, he did make a lot of changes and made a, lot, a big impact to Offaly when he went forward, but he only played maybe 40 to 45 minutes of an all Ireland final at full forward, 10 minutes of a game against Kilkenny at full forward, you know, and um, 
I, I, I think it's a, it's a joke of the all-star selection to have him placed in the full forward. I think he's yeah. uncomfortable about that himself, but it's an interesting point that there, there is a forward losing out. For instance, in our team, the only player beaten on a casting vote was Paul Flynn of Waterford. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Paul Flynn, uh, in his own right, had a very, very good season for Waterford as well. Went to a league final with Waterford, went to an All-Ireland semi-final, played an awful lot of championship games and was one of the top performers in the forward division. You know? So, again, in a situation like that, it's, it's, it's going to be hard on someone. It could be Paul Flynn, it could be Joe Dean, it could be Charlie Carter three in their own right who had a very, very good yeah. campaign. I was looking at your own team, uh, you had Brian Corcoran in your team. Yes, I thought Brian Corcoran had an, an excellent year. I mean, it's very hard within the back divisions. I mean, I would be against the, the, the base of the selection as well. I think you should have three pick for your centre back and your one, your, 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 your centre back should come out of those three or three for your half back. So position, you're only you know? available for the position? If you, if your you're position. only available for the position that you're played in. I mean, the likes of Willie O'Connor on our, on our team that we've picked, I would have been against that as well. I had Willie O'Connor at left cornerback where he played all his hurling this year. And yeah. you know, also, I mean, he's, play, he's picked that right half back here, but really didn't play any game at right half back this year. I would have also felt that Tom Feeney might come into the reckoning in a big way for Waterford as well. I thought he was very, very consistent down through the year as well, all through the league campaign, the championship, and maybe Kevin Keenan at full back right. might get an inclusion as well. Yeah, he, he'll give it a, a right rattle next week. Uh, Joe Dooley was another automatic choice on this team. That's, that's probably a worrying thing from hurling if you were looking at, at forward play. And I mean, there's, uh, there's probably been a lack of consistency on forwards. Uh, over the last 12 months. Um, I think Joe Dooley was the outstanding forward and um, Joe Dooley at 35 years of age or 34 years of age had a brilliant, brilliant campaign. Yeah. Um, the likes of Joe Dean emerging, the likes of um, Joe Dooley and his performances, the James J. Connors are, are probably automatic choices in their right because of the scoring rate, but it was a lot harder maybe to come up with the other three players. One point uh, referred to there, Dooley Bearfield on this team and possibly, probably on the All-Stars have three fellas from that club. That's incredible. This would be a, a fantastic honour if it does happen for those three guys, you know, so it just remains to be seen whether our That's judgment right, yeah. is going to be right on the night or not. Kiss of death, maybe. All right, thanks the <laughs> most. Now, the debate to choose the individual herd of the year was less contentious than the selection of the football equivalent. Let's find out who won it. 1998 has been a wonderful year for Offaly's Brian Whelahan, both at club and county level. Twice an all-star winner, he has proved again this season what a great asset he is to Offaly Hurling. Last March, he was outstanding in Burr's All-Ireland Club victory. His performance on the day earned him a well-deserved Man of the Match award. The summer of 98 proved even more successful as Offaly Hurling went from a position of near despair to one of great achievement. True to an All-Ireland final, he started the game in his accustomed right half-back position. But after a reshuffle in the Offaly camp midway through the first half, Wheelahan moved to the forward line where he scored an incredible 1-6, including the goal that sealed Offaly's victory. Brian Whelahan is unquestionably one of the great hurlers of this decade. I picked him this year as one of my um, all-star forwards, um, even though I suppose his best position would be a, would be a wing-back. Um, great, strong, very strong on the ball, and um, he's, a, he's a great mentality, you know, for the game. We all know Brian is a magnificent defender, and we saw that in the Leinster final where he had a great game. We also saw it in the replays against Clare. But in the All-Ireland final, when things weren't going great for him due to a flu, Brian was switched to the attack. And the attack at that time wasn't dealing very many scores. But Brian changed that completely, and he created as many scores as he got himself. And he scored a vital goal that probably won the All-Ireland for Offaly. I think Brian Whelan is a leader of men, and I think he deserves the Player of the Year for 1998. All right, now remember there's a live clock, but plenty of sport here on Network 2 before that. Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah.